We begin with another effort by the Green Party to oust its leader. The party's governing body will hold a non-confidence vote on July 20th. For it to succeed, 75% of National Council members will have to vote in favour. If that happens, Green Party members will have the final say at a general meeting in August. Green Party leader Annamy Paul is in Toronto. Ms. Paul, I appreciate you joining us tonight. Thanks for having me, David. I'm hoping you can help me clear something up. You told the Globe and Mail, our colleague Ian Bailey, just a couple of days ago that the council was no longer asking you to repudiate your former advisor. But today we learned the National Council will hold a non-confidence vote on July 20th because that hasn't happened yet. What is happening in your party? Well, first, uh, I just want to be clear that, uh, you know, the it's it's so important to me that people know that this is not our entire council, uh, that um, the uh, the, set, the special meeting that was called was called uh, by the president who is entitled to do that on their own steam. Uh, and so this is really just a small group of councillors, uh, including the president, who are heading out the door in August. Other uh, terms are expiring. Uh, I'm really just focused on, on uh, as you said, the preparing for the next election. I'm, pre I'm concerned about uh, the fires that are raging, about uh, the heat wave that is happening. I'm excited about um, being out in the community again after all these months of restrictions. So that's really where my focus lies. But I'm wondering how you could say just a couple of days ago that this was settled when the letter that has been leaked and released publicly was sent to you on June 19th saying that this motion would proceed and that there would be a non-confidence motion against you on the 20th of July, yet you said this was more or less settled. I mean, how can that be? Well, just to be clear, I did not say that it was settled. What I had said is that the first motion that was leaked uh, inappropriately, um, uh, I knew that it had been superseded, but I, I will never be the source of any uh, leak uh, of confidential information. And so uh, even though I had been given this ultimatum a couple of days later, that was superseded by uh, moving directly to uh, this uh, special meeting and vote by the president. So. Um, what I had said is that um, the, the conditions of that ultimatum uh, must no longer be in effect. So this is all very technical, I have to say, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure it's incredibly interesting to people in Canada. Well, you, you have a situation, um, the outgoing president, Liana Canton Cusmano, uh, they have, have made this motion and this will go to a vote uh, on the 20th of, of July. I mean, do you think you have enough votes to survive that you have enough support on the National Council to survive that vote? So I, I really have a choice here, you know, because I only have so many hours in the day and this is an incredibly demanding job. And as you said, uh, we're heading towards an election. We're in the midst of a pandemic. Uh, we have wildfires raging. All of these things are happening. Uh, we have uh, Indigenous peoples uh, who, are, are, who are every day receiving uh, just terrible news that should concern us all. So I only have uh, the, the, um, the willingness and the energy to focus on how I can do those things and how I can share our policies uh, with people. Um, this again is, is a, it's a distraction. It's a very small group of councillors. I really don't want to let it deter me from the work. And I really want to emphasize that um, our council, uh, you know, uh, the president did not speak uh, for our council today. They spoke on their own behalf. But Ms. Paul, you can't deal with those other issues that you've outlined if you don't stay as leader. And there is a concerted effort here. I mean, it's, it's difficult for us to judge on the outside how sizable it is. You keep saying it's a small group of councillors, but this issue clearly isn't going away. I mean, how, how big of a threat is this to your leadership? I mean, are you worried that this is ultimately going to end up as a full party-wide non-confidence vote uh, by the end of August? Well, as I as I said, this is a this is a rump of of councillors that are on their way out, and and really the answer to your question, David, is how much uh, how much do we care about the issues uh, that um, that we tell people in Canada we care about? Uh, if we care about the climate emergency, about a green recovery, about completing our social safety net, about helping folks get through the pandemic as uh, as whole as possible, and keeping people from falling through the cracks. Uh, if we care about getting Greens elected in the next election, then our focus is clear, as mine is, and as all of our councillors should be. Uh, today, we, you know, we learned that we had a 4% bump in the uh, Ipsos polls uh, over the last couple of weeks. Uh, and another point in Nanos, um, you know, we're in territory we haven't been in for quite some time. Uh, that's incredibly exciting to me, and that tells people are, people are responding to our message. So 
that is my focus. Uh, I am, I'm quite confident that our members uh, support my leadership and I'm here at, uh, at the pleasure of our members. Um, that's who I'm here to serve. So you think this is a outsized rump making or outsized noise by a small rump in the party and this in no way represents a, a threat to your role as the leader of the Green Party of Canada? Well, you know, sometimes the most negative voices in the room are the loudest and it's easy for them to drown out the rest. But I think that the polls uh, of the last couple of weeks tell the story about how people are responding uh, to the party and to my leadership. And that is just a wonderful thing. I was in Guelph uh, as the as the uh, guest of Mike Schreiner, who is the leader of the Green Party of Ontario and MPP for Guelph. Uh, and it was the reception was incredibly warm and welcoming. So. Uh, you know, if, if you gauge it by, by what, what happened today, I can see, David, that um, it, it's concerning. But if you gauge it by what we're seeing in the polls, what we're seeing on these visits we can finally do, uh, it's a wonderful time to be green. And uh, I'm again, I'm going to be focused and undeterred in, in the work that I was elected to do. But, you know, it, this has been going on for a couple of weeks now. We've talked about this multiple times uh, here on the show. Uh, we have yet to hear from Ms. May in a substantial way. We have yet to hear from Paul Manley in a substantial way, members of your caucus. For various reasons, they have been unavailable. I know there's a medical reason with uh, Elizabeth May. Uh, but, you know, if this wasn't that big of a deal, Paul Manley would have done an interview at some point in the last little while to say everything is great and that he supports you as leader, even though your former advisor, Noah Zatzman, said what he said about him and, and made allegations of anti-Semitism and said he was going to try to defeat him. Well, our, our MP for Nanaimo, Lady Smith, is, is running in the next election. Uh, he just came through a really tough uh, last few days of the sitting. And his focus is exactly where it should be. It should be on the members of his constituency now that Parliament is in summer recess. It should be on on uh, on fighting the uh, the cutting of old growth in BC, which is something that he's been championing. It should be on affordable housing, which is also something that he's driven through the House. So I absolutely support uh, his decision to keep his focus uh, where it should be and not to be also deterred or distracted by what is going on. I mean, I know you say the focus should be on those issues, but clearly the focus of people in your party are also focused on your internal issues, right? I mean, we have had allegations of anti-Semitism uh, that have been made publicly by, by members of your party. You yourself at your news conference a, a week or so back talked about the, the, the allegations made against you as, as being sexist and, and being racist. Uh, when Canadians look at this, when there are allegations of racism and anti-Semitism being thrown around in the Green Party ranks, why should they consider you with an election coming? Because they understand uh, what I have said, which is that first, every party, every institution uh, uh, has uh, its own work to do on dismantling systemic racism. We're, we're no different. Uh, that's why it's, it's called systemic racism and systemic discrimination. Uh, so we're not alone in that. Uh, but what the public clearly is, is seeing and, and the reason that they're responding is that, uh, again, our, our messages, our policies, the things that we've been proposing throughout this entire pandemic are exactly uh, what would have made a difference. Uh, and that the culture that we offer to politics as well, which is more collaborative and more cooperative, which is why I joined the Green Party, is also something that we're going to need going forward. So, uh, you know, I, I think the public is very wise. I think that the public has judged this situation to be what it is, which is a distraction from a small group of our members. And remember that we have 34,000, uh, and we're talking about five or six people here. Um, who are leaving shortly, uh, their term terms are expiring. Uh, so in their wisdom, they are with us. Um, they are responding to our message. We see that in the polls. I'm very grateful for that. And that is the only place that my attention is going to be focused in the days and weeks ahead. There is other news today, Ms. Paul, that uh, up to 15 party staff members could be let go. Our colleague David Thurton is reporting that uh, this was discussed today at a meeting. And there was a suggestion that the, it's necessary because of the party's financial situation has gotten worse under your leadership. Is, what is your response to that reporting? Well, I don't think that, oh, again, I haven't seen that report. Uh, all I can say is that in the, the, the time that I've been leader, we've had uh, one of our record-breaking quarters um, <clears throat> and our, our targets, um, our fundraising targets have been met. Um, I can't speak to, uh, to any of the other internal things that you mentioned. Uh, I, would, I would suggest that you, um, you contact um, 
uh, the director about that. But I, I support our staff. They're doing just a wonderful job. They, they always have. Uh, they're doing all that they can to get us ready for, for the next election. Um, and, you know, you, David, you uh, at CBC do a great job of reporting about our quarterly fundraising. Uh, and so, of course, you, of course, anyone who wants to see how we've been doing uh, during uh, the eight months I've been in this role uh, can, can check that out. And I think they'll be very pleased. Uh, certainly I am. Okay. Enemy Paul, thanks for coming on on a day like this. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. As Green Party leader Enemy Paul in Toronto. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.